bit? No! Okay, we will all have turns. You ready? Okay. okay, welcome to Teal House Farm. <laughs> And today we're going to make some of our really simple rice mixes that I use to replace like rice aroni boxed rice. So this gets you a specialty side rice kind of thing on the table um, really quickly on a busy day because you've done all your prep work and all of your measuring. So let me show you um, what we need. We're going to make we're going to make three kinds today. We're going to make a replacement for chicken flavored rice, a replacement for Mexican rice, and a replacement for garlic parmesan rice. First off, we're going to make these in pint mason jars, and we're going to vacuum seal them so that they remain shelf stable for the long haul. Even though we will use these up within three months, they would last a lot longer. If you don't want to vacuum seal them, you could put oxygen absorbers in, or you could just make sure you use them relatively qu quickly, like within a month or two. Um, some of them longer. It, it's oh, going to yeah, depend on yeah. which ones you're making, and we'll talk about that when we make them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to use pint mason jars. Ouch. You can use quart mason jars or half pints. Half pints might be great if you're just cooking for one or two people. Um, typically, depending on what we're making the rice for, if it's just like something that's going underneath, like a stir fry, then I'll just use a pint for a family of eight because the kids are more interested on what's on top than the rice. But if the rice itself is a side and we're using it to fill bellies, then usually I'll use a quart's worth, which is two pint jars. So um, typically I just do them in pint jars and just either open one or two depending what we're making. Uh, first, let's, let's put them together, and the girls are going to help me put them together, and then I'll talk to you about just how we use them. Because obviously when you make rice aroni, it comes with instructions on a box, right? There's no instructions here, so we'll talk about the instructions after, but the instructions are same for no matter which mix you're making, which is great. It makes it easy to remember. To make these, we are using white rice. You could kind of use whatever kind of rice you want. You can mix in different kinds, too. Um, we're just using cheap white rice to make this really affordable for our family but like i said any kind of rice you can kind of do it how you like it or do some sort of mixture okay let's get our jars out again these jars have been cleaned and all that good stuff so they're ready to go and we're going to fill them with rice we want about an inch and a half of head space but this is a great project to help kids with because unlike pressure canning you don't have to be perfectly perfect to have this work out well if you do have trouble vacuum sealing you can go back and adjust some head space but as you can see those aren't exactly the same but they're going to be fine and that's why this is such a great project for kids so first let's make our chicken flavored all we need is this chicken bouillon. We're going to add two teaspoons of chicken bouillon granules to each jar. And again, it doesn't have to be perfectly perfect. Great project for kids. Next, we're gonna make the herb and butter. So we need garlic powder. We're gonna put one teaspoon in each jar. We're gonna do one eighth of a teaspoon of salt in each jar. And it's okay if you make a mess. This is easy to clean up later. Next up, we're gonna add some Parmesan cheese. You can obviously buy a much better quality if you want to, but we're all about keeping things as affordable as possible right now. So this is our cheese. We're going to add one tablespoon to each jar. Now, Parmesan cheese is shelf stable if it is vacuum sealed. So this is okay to add to our jars. Last up, we're going to make our Mexican style. We'll need garlic powder. We'll need some chopped onion. You could also use onion powder. We need chicken bouillon granules and some cumin. We're going to add two teaspoons of the chicken granules. We're going to add one teaspoon of the ground cumin, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of the dried onion, and that's it. We're ready to go. They're looking great. Okay, now we're gonna seal them. We're gonna use our vacuum sealer set, which one of our viewers sent us a while ago. It's been very handy. Um, it's real simple. There's a mini little electric vacuum here that just plugs into the counter. And then I have both regular mouth and wide mouth tops that suck out all the air and got our tubing. And basically, um, you're just gonna use your mason jar lids and suck it out. Now, I forgot to mention, um, you don't have to use mason jars to do this. I have used uh, peanut butter jars, um, like pasta sauce jars, just glass jars, you know, that you bought from the store and had something else in them. Um, 
but it just has to fit a mason top lid because these are sized for mason top lids. So there might be contraptions that you can buy that'll use any kind of lid, but um, this specific set, which I'll link below, you have to have a mason, um, mason jar lid on it, so it has to be a mason jar sized top. But let's get these sealed. So last time I used the vacuum sealer, a lot of you recommended using a coffee filter as a buffer because the powder can be sucked into your motor and ruin it. So we're gonna try this uh, and just see if it still seals good. So we're gonna just stick the coffee filter, I'm assuming this is what you mean, in here and that'll, that'll prevent any of the um, powder from our spices from getting sucked into the vacuum motor and ruining the motor, so. There we go, nice and tight. Those jar lids are not moving, awesome. Now I always recommend labeling your jars because you think you'll remember, but let's be honest, we're not going to. Of course, this only works if your Sharpie marker isn't dead. So now we have to come up with a plan B because I really do want to label and date these. So plan B, we found some duct tape and used a regular pen. Okay, so let's talk about how we use these. It's really easy, which is why I make them up like this because um, on a busy day, Yes, I could run around and just get white rice and the spices and make it like that, but on a busy day, I just grab this and it's all pre-flavored and measured and ready to go, the right size for my family. So you need two jarfuls, so whatever size jar you use, two jarfuls of water, bring it to a boil, then dump in your rice mix. And I also find that I like to add about a tablespoon of butter to the water, but you don't have to, but I feel like it makes a better quality rice in the end. Um, so I do recommend that. So when you do, do you do two jar full of water with a tablespoon of butter, but again, that's optional. Bring that to a boil, dump in your rice mix, and then lower to a simmer and cover for 17 minutes. And then it's ready to go. Fluff it with a fork. You might let it sit a minute or two, and then it's ready to eat. Super easy. And it's great when they're pre-spiced, ready to go, so that you can have an easy rice side on a busy day without all the measuring and finding the spices and discovering that you're missing one or something like that. It's just ready to go, just like a rice aroni would be. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you guys. We will see you all soon.